All right guys, so here we are coming to you from my new rental. And I know this place is not rent ready as it is, but I'm gonna teach you guys some stuff that I've learned getting into the rental business. Now, by no means am I some type of expert on this because I'm still learning along the way and there's still so much more to learn. I'm gonna tell you guys a couple of tips that have helped me out and, and some things that you definitely shouldn't do in this business. Now, the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that you get a good deal. Every single property that you will ever buy, you make your money on the buy, not the sell, okay? This is really important. A lot of people end up in hot water and end up with properties that absolutely suck. They're not cash flowing because they mess up on the buy side. When you buy a property is where all your money is made because all of your problems, all of your profits are gonna come from when you buy the property. Now, I know that that might sound contrary um, to what I'm saying, you know, don't you make your money when you sell a property? No way. Because, give you an example, this property right here. The after repair value on this house is about 220,000. So it'll probably appraise around that area. There's a couple homes not too far from here that have appraised for that, that amount. Well, if I pay 220 for this and I gotta put this much work into it, I already lost a tremendous amount of money because it's never gonna appraise for 220 looking like this, right? So you have to buy it appropriately. You gotta make sure that you're gonna um, get it at a price that's gonna work. At the same time, even though this needed work, we bought it for $67,000. So probably a little over what? I think 30%, 40% of its value, of its actual face value. Now again, in order to get full face value, this house has to be in pristine condition. Brand new everything, new kitchen, new bath. You know, it, it's gotta look awesome. Now, the other part to that is um, your appraise value, right? So if this thing will appraise for about 220, you can get a, a rental loan for about, I think the max, depending on rent, probably gonna be like around the 140 range. So that means that we could pull out about $140,000 in equity on this property. Cash flow, maybe a couple hundred bucks, but depending on how much the repairs cost, um, I think right now this property is gonna take about 40,000. Some hidden structural issues that have happened. So we'll be able to make, okay, make, without selling the house, Remember, make money on your buy. We'll be able to make about $20,000 in our pocket after we finish fixing up this house and refinancing it out. So the best part about that is that we're gonna make $20,000 and we're gonna pay zero taxes on it, okay? Zero taxes because you don't pay money or you don't pay taxes on loans. Ah. You don't pay taxes on loans. So if you don't pay taxes on loans, that means the $20,000 that we're gonna get is gonna be free and clear in my pocket and somebody else is gonna be paying for that mortgage, not me, my tenant, okay? So gotta price it appropriately. Make sure that you're gonna make money on that buy because once you're set up, no matter what type of troubles you run into, you're not, not gonna have to worry about, oh my God, I ran out of money, right? That is, that is an investor's worst nightmare is I ran out of money. Take a look at this floor here. All right, so was not expecting to have to tear that up. Um, the floor behind me, right here in the hallway, this is brand new subfloor. That was also an unexpected uh, cost here that I had no idea that I was gonna have to do. I also have some termite damage. So in that bathroom back there, there was termite damage. And in this back room here, this had termite damage right around this area right here. Um, we did already spray something for termites, so that's good, right? Sprayed the termites down. And then, uh, let me think, what else? Uh, there was some structural issues that we had to fix and it was not in the budget. We thoroughly inspected this house to make sure that we weren't gonna have to do stuff like that. But you always wanna have a good wiggle room. Wiggle room of 10% of what your real costs are. Um, 
definitely help out, or I should say not 10%, $10,000. So if the repair costs are 40, add another 20, or add another 10 in there. That way you can, um, you know, make sure that you're pricing it correctly. Now the kitchen, see here, there was a window there that we uh, deleted, and uh, there's another window. Well, it's not a window anymore; it's a door because we flip flopped the door here and the the window because what we're gonna do. See if I can get a good angle here. So what we're gonna do is right about here, we're gonna move this cabinet over and we're gonna put a dishwasher because in order for us to get maximum rent, we definitely have to have um, you know, a really nice appeal. And my wife wouldn't live here if there wasn't a dishwasher. I'm pretty sure everybody's wife or everybody in general wouldn't live here if there wasn't a dishwasher. Who the heck wants to be doing dishes? So even though we're not gonna replace these cabinets, these cabinets are great, man. These are, these are real wood cabinets, okay? Real wood cabinets, they're really nice. So we're actually gonna paint them white. Paint all the cabinets white, granite countertops. So these countertops are going by, which is also gonna help with resale value. It's also gonna help with appraise value. In order for us to get maximum money out of this, we want this to appraise as high as possible. Now, another thing that we, we didn't budget for was changing windows. We weren't gonna change the windows now. We know it did need it. These windows are original to the house. They're about, I don't know, like 60 years old, wooden windows. And they're okay. And in, in they installed, and they installed some storm windows. So like, the windows are decent, right? Like I, I wouldn't want to replace it, but we ended up just saying, you know what, we're, we're going this far, might as well replace it. And then, you know, the, the whole bathroom, I was going to do, you know, LVP throughout the whole bathroom, but we're deciding that we're just going to go with tile because it'll give it a really nice appeal, right? We want to attract a, a, a C class, B class tenant, um, even though this neighborhood is still on the up and up. This is like bordering a D minus neighborhood, but you know, that's, that's a part of gentrification, right? So by doing all this, we're budgeting about $40,000 for everything. Now, luckily plumbing electrical are, are in great shape. Nothing has to be done there. HVAC is in good shape. Uh, we do have to replace the water heater, which is back there. Probably see it right around there. And then got the new water heater sitting here in the living room. So nice gas water heater. Um, I don't have any of the appliance here, obviously, because you know, this place is a war zone right now, but there's a lot to be done. Um, another unexpected expense, see back here. So this is all gutted because this is like wood paneling and I hate wood paneling. Like, uh, you know, on, in my opinion, it's ugly. So instead of just painting it, cause this wall, because we deleted, the window, we turned it into a door. The door, we blocked it off. And then the extra window that was here was deleted. This whole wall is gonna be drywall. So I was like, man, it's gonna look kind of weird if we got one drywalled wall and then the rest is all wood paneling wall. You know, it's just, I don't know, it's ugly. Um, so that was another thing that I, I didn't really budget for. So speaking about all those repairs, so you're purchasing, right? Got your purchase right. Then you gotta get your repairs right. Um, so just to go over real quick, a quick summary of what this house needs. So this house needs paint. Um, it, it was a, an okay gray paint, so paint. All right, there goes our first expense. Floors, whole house needs floors. So all this was carpeted. Let me see if I could get this. It was carpeted. There's hardwoods underneath. These hardwoods, they suck and they're in really bad shape. So I didn't want to refinish it. So paint, floors. Then we got uh, subfloor issues, which we're fixing that now. And then we got to paint the cabinets and then bathroom. So we got five pieces here. Um, then your mechanicals, which would be our uh, water heater. This house has a brand new roof on it. We had to redo the roof. 
Um, had a small water leak. You can see where we had to replace some of the drywall back here because of it. It's right there. So seven things that had to be done on this house. And what just these minor things, okay? We're talking no major structural issues. Um, no plumbing, no electrical, because they're all up to date, okay? It's gonna cost around 40 grand, all right? Redoing the bathroom, redoing the kitchen, and that's, we're not even putting brand new cabinets, we're just painting the cabinets. So, 40 grand, I think, uh, what, what, will, what will we be into it with the 40 grand? So, I got I, full purchase price with closing costs and everything, 68,500 roughly, so let's call it 70. We're gonna be in all in on this thing for about 110, maybe pushing it 120. Um, I'm calling it at 110, roughly. Uh, I've spent like $10,000 in materials and probably about 10,000 in labor so far. But I'm not scared, right? Because number one, what's my rent gonna be on this property when I'm done, right? There's another thing that we're gonna factor in here. So we got our purchase price, our repairs, now our rent value. So rent value on this house right here, this is gonna be one bedroom here, and we got three more bedrooms on the other side of the house, that way. So we got three bedrooms, one bathroom. I wish it had one more bathroom, but I am not gonna start opening up that can of worms. I thought about, and I'll show you guys what I thought about. So this one bathroom is big, right? This house has an addition. I'm trying not to fall here because if you guys see what I'm, I'm walking on here, I'm like literally living on a prayer, walking on this, this two by four beam, <laughs> um, or this choice, I should say, not really a two by four. So there's a bunch of dead space here. The, the laundry is here. And then the, the, you know, the water heater's here. And then I got all this dead space back here. I'm trying to make sure I don't fall. But there's plenty of room here. You can see there, there, there's the old bathtub that we, we haven't thrown out yet. So we got all this dead space. So what I was thinking about doing was putting a half bath in here. Um, but again, then the budget is gonna be increased. And the amount of rent that you would get for having a half bath, like an extra half bath, it's not really worth it. Um, we originally only had three bedrooms in this house and that back room was like a living room area and it was really easy to close it off. It costed me like, I don't know, like $2,000 in labor and parts or materials. And uh, we'll probably get an extra 200 bucks a month for that. So now that was worth it, right? Also, appraised value goes up higher, so you know, a couple things here and there that help out with, you know, what happens with the house, you know, like that, that type of stuff adds value. So does an extra half bath, but I, I already did one addition. I don't need two, right? So rent value on this house is about $1,700 a month. So $1,700, my mortgage is going to be about, uh, with taxes and insurance, is going to be about a thousand I think it's like a thousand dollars even a month. So a thousand dollars, and then I'm making, uh, you know, one thousand seven hundred dollars after management fees, after taking out for repairs, vacancies, and everything else. My total cash flow on this is going to be about four hundred bucks. Okay, three. Let's say three hundred, right? Three hundred dollars. Now I know you're like, why would you go through all of this trouble for $300 a month? And while that might seem like not a lot of money, I'll tell you what I learned, okay? And this is, this is, this is a lot of stuff that I've been through to learn this, okay? Even losing $40,000 in another business. So the $300 that I'm gonna make on this property, right? I'm gonna get two things. Number one, I'm gonna get appreciation on the property. No matter what happens short term, right? 2005 could happen, or I should say not 2005, 2007 should, could happen all over again. And this house loses 50% of its value, 
right? Let's just claim it, right? It loses 50% of its value. Guess what? I don't care. You wanna know why? Because my focus is on the long return. 30 years from now, this house will appreciate roughly 3% to 5% per year, depending on location. Some locations, they appreciate less. Some locations, they appreciate more. Here in North Carolina, that's the average, three to 5%. It's actually more than that, but let's be conservative. That means that today's value is about 220. In 30 years from now, let's just say even 10 years from now, this house will be valued at almost $300,000. 20 years from now, I'm gonna be over $300,000. So I'm gaining hundreds of thousands of dollars in equity over the years. And then my rent is going up steadily 3% per year. I'm gonna show you something real quick. So in five years, if I only increase my rent 3%, which right now the average is five, I'm gonna be looking at $1,900 rents here. See how well you can see that, if you can see that. Yeah. $1,900 rents. Now, in 20 years, that rent is gonna be $3,000 a month, okay? That's crazy. Just in 10 years, I'm gonna be at $2,200 a month. So in 20 years, I'll be making $3,000 a month, plus I'm gonna have, I'll tell you how much equity I'll have. As a matter of fact, let's do the math real quick, right? So again, the same compound interest calculator, three, three percent. We're gonna put our starting value at two hundred twenty thousand dollars in ten years. This property will be valued at two hundred ninety-six thousand. In twenty years, it would be valued at four hundred thousand dollars. Again, conservative, three percent. This is a three percent, you know, three percent rise year over year. Okay. That means in 30 years, this house could be worth a little over half a million dollars. Now, for the $300 a month, right? Obviously, I can't live off of $300 a month. What is that gonna pay for in my life? Uh, my light bill is like 300 bucks, okay? It's actually probably lower than that. So it'll pay my light and gas, my natural gas. I live in, you know, a northern state. Or not really a northern state, but I live in a place that gets cold. Um, so with that kind of income, $300, obviously one house isn't gonna make a difference for me. But what if I have more than one house? What if I have 10? Now I got 3,000 a month. Okay, you know, I can pay my rent and a couple other things. Uh, got 100 houses. Now I have what? 100 houses at 300 bucks is $30,000 a month. Now we're talking, right? But guess how much money I have invested in this house after I refinance out? Zero. So this is what you call an infinite return, okay? This is no money involved. Any money that's ever gonna be needed in this house, guess where it's gonna come from? Some money that this house produces, okay? So I'm gonna be making, let's, those $300 are only for the first year. Every year after that, it's gonna increase and increase and increase. So by year five, I'll be making $2,000 a month. By year 20, I'll be well over that. Or I should say by year 10, I'll be over 2,000. By year 20, you know, I'm already making way more money than what I was originally making. And then my equity is through the roof. That means that this house will double in value in 30 years. So if I have a hundred of these houses, what is that? A uh, hundred, Jesus, a hundred, I'm, I'm so bad at math because I, I don't know how far this goes. So if I have, this house is $220,000 and I have a hundred of these houses, that's $22 million in uh, value that I have, right? If I sell this in 30 years, that's now $50 million. 50 million, okay? So in what most people would work a lifetime, 30 years, okay? When you think about this, most people get a better job or get the job of their dreams in their 30s, okay? So that means when I'm 60, if I own 100 rentals and they're worth 220,000 at the time that I bought it, and then 30 years later when I'm 60, they're worth $500,000 a piece, 
That means that I made 50 million or I made $20 million profit on top of the rental income. And I made a rental income for the next 30 years. That sounds like a deal to me. That sounds like a great deal to me. Why? Because you gotta have the long-term game in your head. Short term, what can I do with this house? Yes, I could renovate it. I could uh, fix this thing up, make it look really nice, sell it and I'll make like a hundred grand, easy. By the time this thing is done, it, it will appraise for 220, I can sell it for 220. And after realtor fees and commissions, I'll walk away with like 85 grand, right? Fantastic, you know? Um, but here's the thing, I don't, I don't need a flipping business. Um, Cause yeah, I'm gonna make some equity now, but in the long term, long term, this house is gonna be worth in 30 years, okay? My mortgage is for 30 years. That means when this house is paid off, I'm instantly gonna gain more rental income, right? So if we're at 1700 now, in 30 years, this house will be renting for four grand a month. My, my mortgage is gonna drop off for $1,000. So that means I'm gonna be making an additional $1,000, so I'm gonna be making the whole four grand a month. You multiply this by 100, that's 400 grand a month. I like that. 400 grand a month, okay, per month, per month. That is, damn, that's a hell of a lot of money. <laughs> If you look at that, four, that's what? $4.8 million a year. And the best part about it is, it's taxed at a lower rate, it's all passive income. It's great money, man, it's great money. That's why, it, it, like I tell everybody, it's important that you keep some of these properties for yourself. A lot of wholesalers, they wholesale everything and never keep any real estate. Buy real estate, man. Uh, I wouldn't quit my day job if I had one or two properties, but when you're sitting on 20, 30, 40, 50 properties, things get a little better. Yeah, you still inherit some headaches and whatnot, but stopping at one or two, you could still win. I'm not saying you can't. Like I know there's a lot of guys that say, oh yeah, if you're only gonna have two properties, just don't even bother with it. Like, nah, that's, that's not true. I would say three is the magic number. Get up to three. If you wanna go further, you can. But if you bought three properties, and let's say you, you bought all three of them and you're all in for 300 grand with all your loans and everything, and the three properties are worth 220,000 a piece, you're, you're sitting on like 600 grand worth of real estate. Well, 30 years when you retire, not only will your 600 grand be paid off, because you paid off the 300 grand in, in loans, but you'll also have an appraised value of like, what, 1.2 million? 1.2 million and you'll be making, I don't know, like nine grand a month? Man, it's way better than a 401k because most guys will be sitting here 10, 20 years in a 401k and might have like 100 grand. Um, what if you bought three rental properties? They produce money every year and you never even touched that. You kept working your regular day job and when you retire in 30 years, you have over a million dollars, plus you have an asset that's producing money every month. It's way better, way, way, way better. So those are some tips that I've learned. I know this video was really long, a lot of rambling and whatnot, but these tips were like vital for me to understand the rental game. There's not a lot of money in rentals, okay? Imagine, I'm, I'm going through all the, everybody's like, oh, these landlords make all the money. I'm making $300 off this house. That's like what, a whole week's paycheck at McDonald's? And I'm making that in a month? So come on now. But the amount of work, the effort, the long-term game, yes, over time, me making this sacrifice now, in 10 years, I'm gonna benefit for, from it. In 30 years, I'm gonna benefit from it. That's what I'm looking for. I ain't looking for short-term games, okay? We do all this to beautify these areas, to make them look nice, to attract better people, better quality of life for people. So that's why we really do it, all right? So when people say, oh yeah, you guys just make all the money and dragging people through the mud, no nah, man, it ain't like that. It's a lot of work for just 300 bucks, all right? 
But enough of my yapping. Appreciate you guys watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this. I can't wait to do the full walkthrough on this place when it's done in about 30 days. So um, appreciate everybody for watching and I'll catch you guys on another vlog.